Namaste everyone. Welcome to the third day of the yoga challenge. Today we're going to have a vinyasa based class with emphasizing on the standing postures. We will prepare the body for the standing postures and learn how we can keep our knees safe in our yoga practice. So today for the class I would suggest you to have one belt and a couple of blocks. Um, having also the bolster is just optional. I'm going to use it for my shavasana today. So let's go ahead and get started. Lay down on your back. Make sure you feel comfortable here. We're going to spend some time before we'll start moving. If your lower back feels a little achy, you can bring your knees together and keep them a bit wider apart so you can release your back. Place your arms along the sides. Turn your palms facing down to the floor. You can close your eyes to cut the old visual distractions. using these first minutes of the class to tune in to the body. So whatever you was doing before the class, whatever you already planned in your mind, in your head, what you will be doing after the class, we're going to try to let it go. So as you inhale it, God will hold all threads of your attention. And as you exhale and drop it all into your body. So for the next hour or so, nothing else exists outside of the room where you're practicing or outside of the shape of your physical body. I'm noticing here if there is any soreness or tension into your muscles. Maybe your body completely relaxed right now. Whatever feel, feelings are, don't push them away. Simply accept them as the material with which you're going to practice today, with which you're going to work today. So first right palm on your navel and left palm on your diaphragm where's your lower ribs. Make sure your elbows on the floor so you're not stressing your upper body. Start very gently shifting your awareness into your breath. Feel how the breath is moving your body. Feel how the air moving inside of your nostrils, in and out. Don't try to change your breath right now. Try to make your breath effortless and natural, simply witnessing what is the nature of your breath. Next inhalation, imagine your breath is a wave which is moving inside of your body. So as you inhale and feel your right palm is rising up, your belly is expanding, and your ribs are coming up, your rib cage expanding, your collarbone is lifting up slightly. And as you're exhaling, everything going down to the, uh, towards the spine, left palm, right palm, release. And keep going. Maybe at the beginning it will be a little bit tricky and complicated to find this way, to find this very fluid movement up and down, but with the time it will become as your second nature. Here. And the next exhale, come back to your neutral breath. However, as you're coming back to your normal breath, it's already changed as you introduce this full yogic breath. So the breath becoming a bit deeper, a bit longer. So try to maintain this pattern of your breath. Bring the same distance between your feet and between your knees. Keep width apart. Use your arms along the sides, palms pressing into the floor. We're going to start working the spine. 
As you inhale, press your feet into the floor, your toes into the floor, and start engaging your gluteal muscles, lift your hips up and feel so you're rolling your weight all the way in your shoulders. As you exhale, slowly one vertebra at a time, coming down to the floor. Keep moving with your own pace, one breath, one movement. But really pay attention on the exhalation, how each vertebra is touching the floor and you're finding this extra space in between the vertebrae. Keep going. And find a massage for your spine, especially you can reach this point when you're pressing your lower back into the floor. Next, inhale, let's add on the arms. So arms coming up as you inhale and touching the floor behind your head. And exhale, slowly lower it down. If you're struggling with pressing this lumbar curve into the floor, you can try to engage your core a little bit at the end of exhalation. So drawing your navel slightly in and towards the spine will help you to press your lower back into the floor. Take a few more breaths. Next, exhale, slowly allow yourself all the way to the foot. Pull your right knee to the chest, take a few breaths. As you're pulling your knee to the chest, you feel how your lower back now completely pressing into the floor. Send a few breaths into your right side, into the right side of your back. If it feels comfortable, you can push your left foot away and extend your left leg straight. Keep your left foot close, flat and flat towards you. Keep your right palm on your knee, left palm on your left thigh, start circling your knee. Imagine you're drawing the circles with your knee on the ceiling. Let's say five times external rotation. And five internal rotation. And then pull your knee to the chest and again now rotate only your foot five times external. Here you can do 10, 15, depending on how you feel. If it's morning, it's always good to uh, move a little bit more the joints, lubricating the joints after the sleep, change, opposite direction. And release. For the next one, I'm going to use the belt. So grab the belt. Uh, it's always good to have a really long belt so you can keep your elbows on the floor when you're placing the belt to the floor. So here, if you feel your hamstrings are really tight today, you can bend your left knee, press your left foot into the floor. It will help you to extend your right leg. So first, keep your uh, belt from both sides. You're going to warm up the foot. So starting to pull the belt right and left, removing the belt all the way to the heel. And all the way up towards your toes. And then back to your heel. Sometimes foot is really sensitive so don't push, don't pull too much. But then with the time you'll get used to it. And then coming back to the ball of the foot and then slide your elbows touch to the floor. And you're pulling this right leg towards yourself, making your best to keep this right leg straight. And if that feels okay, you can extend your left leg forward. Keep this leg extended, keep breathing into this back side of your leg. You can look at your knee. So make sure your knee is not collapsing in. Make sure the straight leg is pulling the knee all the way straight. And we'll come back to this um, observation of the movement of the knee today a lot. So we're just starting here to noticing how the body is moving and um, how the body is feeling in some kind of shapes which we offer into it. Then we're going to hold the belt with the right hand and open your right foot to the side. So here can be a little tricky to keep your left palm on the side, on your left thigh, so you're making sure you're not lifting your left side. My right elbow on the floor and I'm just breathing into the inner side of my right thigh. Lots of meridians, which is connected to internal organs, uh, located on the inner side of the thigh. So almost in yoga practice. 
Inhale, bring it back to the center. Place your belt aside, we will use it later. Then bend your left knee and place your right ankle on your left side. Don't put it on your knee, slide it a little bit uh, down towards your hip. So we're going to either to push this right thigh away from you very kindly, very gently. If that feels okay, you can go a bit deeper and interlace your fingers uh, behind your left thigh or maybe on your left shin. If you interlace your knee finger on your shin on your thigh, make sure you're not pulling this left knee towards the navel. So try to imagine that this uh, movement towards your um, hip, towards your shoulder. So in this way, you create more space for your right thigh to rotate out. And exhale, release. <laughs> Let's take out the legs. So we're starting with extending the leg, placing the belt into the foot, and starting with warm up. So putting the belt from side to side, almost a reflexology session today. Waking up all these little points in the foot. And then we're coming back over the toes, keeping it here and then elbows down to the floor. And again, if that feels comfortable, push your right leg away, right foot flat. Look at your left knee, make sure it's not moving in. So maybe lock your knee a little bit if you are able to make your left leg straight. Point your Foot towards you and you're pushing this left heel away and up towards the ceiling, creating this extra space into the back side of your left leg. And then keeping the belt with the left arm, opening the left to the side, right palm on your right thigh. Breathe. Exhale back in the center. Remove the belt, place it aside. Bend your right knee, right foot on the floor, left ankle, this round bone is going on the right thigh. Just start with the pushing your left thigh away and out. And if you're going deeper, go into your own modification of this pose, threading the needle and then pulling this right knee towards your right shoulder. This pose is especially beneficial for those who suffer in the sciatica, releasing this little piriformis muscle. So if you have such an issue, you can stay a bit longer. You just use it as a part of your yoga practice or as a part of your stretch. Exhale, release. Both feet down to the floor. Keep your feet together, knees together, and pull your knees hard, your knees to the chest. Nose going towards the knees to run the muktasana. You can roll from side to side if you want to have some pressure and massage in the lower back. From this pose, we're going to roll all the way to the seated pose. But we're going to do it a few rounds. So keep your palms on your knees, create the momentum, start rolling all the way up. Try to keep your spine round. And at some point, give a try and try to come up on your feet, extending your arms. Let's try again. And one more time. Use your core. Very nice. Come up on your knees and your palms. So palms underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers. If you have a very flexible arms and sometimes the hyperflexed uh, elbows, just be sure you're kind of uh, creating this micro bending in your elbows. Otherwise, if you had arms uh, like me, you will see uh, which a weird shape of your arms can be in this pose. So bend your elbows and turn them elbow crease slightly in. Spread your fingers, knees in one line with your palms, uh, press the tops of the feet into the floor. As you're inhaling, open up your chest, drop your belly, look up. As you're exhaling, draw your navel in, chin to the chest. Inhale, chest open, look up. Exhale, round your spine. One more. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. And come to the neutral spine. Move your palms further forward, tuck your toes under, and slowly move yourself back into the down dog. In first down dog, you can move one knee at a time, sending one heel at a time towards the floor. Moving hips from side to side, trying to free the shoulders, free the neck. And if you feel that it's too much pressure on your wrist or your shoulders, 
Bend your knees as much as you need and stay here, releasing your head completely. Otherwise, try to push your heels towards the floor. Few breaths. Bring your feet closer to each other. Let's lift the right leg up and heel, point your foot back. Exhale, knee to the chest, shift forward. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, right knee to the right shoulder. Inhale, lift it back up. Exhale, right knee to the left arm, try to touch. Inhale, lift it back up, bend your knee. Imagine your foot is so heavy, it's falling on the left. Same pressure in between your palms, head is just hanging down. And square back your hips. Step all the way in between your palms. Drop your back knee down to the floor. Come on. Check that the front leg is 90 degree. Keep for two blocks nearby. Just in case. Okay? Especially if you know you have really tight hamstrings here. So interlace your fingers behind your spine. Hug your spine with your shoulder blades. Send your pelvis down, chest up. And float your arms up for the low lunge. As you're inhaling, shoulders traveling up to the ears. As you're exhaling, move them away. Shoulder blades going away from the neck. Take a few breaths. Exhale, palms down. Grab the blocks if you have one and start to, start to move this left knee slightly back so you have more space for your right leg being straight. So if that's feels comfortable for you, you can try to move into this half split Ardha Hanumanasana without blocks. So touch the floor, look forward, try to make your hips square and then slowly lean towards your front leg. Release your head, breathe into this right side. And again, you can just glance on your right knee and see if this knee again going in. So if it, if it is, you can bend your knee slightly and activate this inner thigh. So kind of slightly rotate, activate and rotate it out. At the same time, watch out for your right foot. Right foot is pointing up. So all these little alignments will be really helpful as we would move into the standing postures. And then slowly move onto your right foot. Tuck the toes of your left foot under, place your left palm down to the floor. We're going to slowly twist towards your right leg and extend your right arm up. Then lift your left leg up, keeping your hips square. Take a few breaths. And exhale. Step back into the plank pose, high push up. Palms underneath your shoulders, keep your spine straight and chest open. Imagine you're squeezing the pencils in your armpits, start to slowly lower yourself all the way to the floor, point your feet back. Turn your palms facing towards your chest, lift your chest up. Imagine you want to touch this floor, um, you want to touch the front edge of the yoga mat and you're pulling yourself forward till your navel will touch the floor and then turn your elbows down to the floor. Sphinx pose. Feet together, pull the floor towards yourself with your palms, push your chest forward, breathe. So the idea here is create the space in your lower back. So by pushing yourself forward, pulling yourself forward, the chest forward and activating the thighs and pulling the feet back, you create this extra space in your lower back to not feel any tension in this pose. Exhale, release. Now look where is your elbows. Slide your palms in the same position for the cobra pose. Again, use your spine here, just slightly come up. And then use your legs muscles, come higher. And then use your arms just a little bit. Elbows stay bent, elbows pointing back. Tuck your toes under and move back into the down dog. Very nice. Take a few breaths. Let's do the same sequence on the other side with a bit modification for the spine. Starting with the left, left leg up. Exhale, knee to the chest. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, knee to the left shoulder. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, knee to the right arm. Inhale up. Bend your knee, open your hip. 
release breathe and exhale square back your hip step forward with your left foot back foot back knee down to the floor if you was using the blocks for the previous side please use it again your choice and again interlace your fingers shoulder blades back inhale same and float your arms up as by saying float you actually feeling this floating if you would be under the water and your arms are super light shoulders are melting down exhale move back for the half split front leg straight check the knee then slowly either stay here or lower yourself all the way towards this left leg exhale back in the low lunge right palm down to the floor left palm to the knee twist extend your left arm up and if you're taking the next step lift your back knee up and you float exhale both palms down step back into the high push-up plank pose slightly tuck your tailbone under push your navel in towards your spine and slowly lower yourself to the floor pull your chest slightly up and forward and extend your arms forward locust pose palms facing towards each other lift your right leg and left arm forward and up exhale down right arm left uh, uh, leg up exhale change one more time inhale up exhale inhale up and exhale look forward try to maintain your breath as it's not a very good practice when you engage in your core laying down on your belly and holding your breath not very good for the spine oh uh, sorry for the heart so as we inhaling lift your arms lift your feet and slightly lift yourself higher doesn't matter though how high you're lifting your limbs the more important you're finding this length forward and back hold this pose breathe Bend your elbows, point your elbows back, palms facing down, Sarpasana, snake pose. Exhale, palms down, feet together, press your palms, Bhujangasana, Cobra. And exhale, move back, downward facing dog, Adha Mukhushwanas. For the next inhale, keep, keep looking in between your feet and with the palms, start walk back. You can bend your knees slightly if you need to and keep them slightly bent, take your elbows, release your head. As you're folding forward here and to, um, during the class, try to move always your shoulders away from your ears. Take it as a habit which you will need to create in yourself. And then just sway your chest from side to side. Release your arms, slowly one word to breath at a time, rising all the way back up. And take a couple of rounds with your shoulders. Good. So now we're standing on the back side of the yoga mat and we have the whole length of the yoga mat in front of you. We're going to incorporate in our class today those little exercises which we were doing in the first day of our challenge when we were building the strength in the feet. Is uh, not only for the strength but on for the concentration and focus. So place your right foot in front of your left. Extend your arms in front of you. Lift your heels up and hey. Engage your core and as you're exhaling, slowly start to lower your heels and palms towards your thighs. Heels touching the floor at the same time as your palms touching your thighs. Let's do two more times. Inhale, reach. Exhale, down. Keep your gaze steady and soft. Inhale, up. Exhale down. Change. Step your left foot in front of your right. Give some distance between your feet. Inhale, reach. Exhale down. Keep going. Inhale. Exhale. If your breath will be really long, you will find how challenging is it to move slow. Right foot step. Keep moving. 
And as I said at the first day of this challenge, if you have a flat feet, especially for those, it really would be really beneficial if you spend a little bit more time and for example, we'll walk even uh, further forward from your yoga mat just to have more exercise for your feet or you can do instead of three times as I do as I'm doing you can do let's say five to six times on each side as you're walking forward and the final time I'm doing three times more in and out and exhale now place your feet together, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. So it's almost a triangle shape with your legs, with your feet and the parallel, the outer edges of your feet and the parallel with each other. Release your arms, close your arms, Tadasana Mountain Pose. So as you stay here, especially if you're closing your eyes, move all your awareness into your feet. Feel your right foot pressing into the floor. Feel your left foot pressing into the floor. Start shifting your weight slightly towards your toes as your heels become in light. And start shifting your weight towards your heels as your toes become in light. Then shift your weight towards the <coughs> outer edges of your feet. And then towards the inner side of your feet. And then bring it back to the center. Think about the triangles on your feet, on the soles of your feet. So the triangle has three points. One is the top of your heel another right underneath on the ball of the foot underneath the big toe and one underneath your pinky toe so when we're going to move through the standing postures or through the balancing postures try to think that all these three points are pressing equally into the floor so bring your feet together moving through the sound salutations from ashtanga vinyasa bring your palms in front of your heart engage your core engage your thighs as you inhaling reach your arms up look up arms back Exhale, fold over your legs if you need, bend your knees. Inhale, half lift palms on your shins or touch the floor in front of your feet. Exhale, step back into the plank pose, high push up. Lower yourself all the way to the floor or into the low push up. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Move your hips back, breathe. As you're breathing in down dog, I think if you're familiar with the ujjayi breath, that's a perfect position to breathe ujjayi as the breath becoming super long and steady. If you hear about it the first time, just really concentrate on the exhalation and try to push your navel slightly in to create more space for your lower back. Look forward between your palms, bend your knees, step a hop forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way back up. And exhale, release your arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, flow, step back. Circle through the vinyasa. Down, up, and back. During the class, whenever I would say vinyasa, it's always optional. Whenever you're moving through that, or just go straight into the down dog, or in the child pose. Look forward. Step a hop. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, release your arms. Final round. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, flow, step back. Vinyasa. Meet your back and down dog. Take a few breaths. Look full. Bend your knees. Step a hop. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, full. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, release your arms. Stay here for a few moments to reconnect with your breath. Come back to the normal steady pace of your breath and from the next flow from the next sequence we will start to incorporate the standing balance in our pose in our uh, class the first one is going to be warrior one palms together bend your knees make sure you can see your heels 
extend your arms up, Utkatasana chair pose. Make sure you still can see your toes and look forward. Utkatasana from the Sanskrit translated as a powerful pose. As you press your knees towards each other, press your ankles towards each other, activate your gluteal muscles, activate your thighs, quadriceps. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back. Vinyasa or downward facing dog. Your choice. And whenever you're coming in down dog, step forward with your right foot. Look at your back foot. Alignment heel to the heel, back foot on the floor. Come up halfway, sit deeper with your right leg. Extend your arms along the sides, palms facing in. Next, inhale, push your left foot into the floor and rise up. Same as we did in the low lunge. Shoulders first coming up and then move them away. Breathe. Exhale, palms down, step back, Tinyas. Other side, left foot forward, back foot on the floor, alignment heel to the heel. Come up halfway, interlace your fingers behind, chest open. Inhale, press into your right foot, reach your arms up, rotate your back, thigh in. Imagine you want to tear the yoga mat apart with your feet. Exhale, palms down. Now just step back into the down dog or circle through the vinyasa, your choice. Look forward, step a hop. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees for the chair. Reach up, inhale, and all the way up. Exhale. There you go. Step on the middle of the yoga mat. We're going to place the feet shoulder width apart, arms along the sides. Feet in the parallel with each other and extend your arms in front of you, fingers together, release your shoulders. Keep your gaze steady and soft at one point. Bend your knees, sit deeper in this tiny chair behind you. Breathe and activate the lower part of your abdomen. Release your facial muscles. Inhale, rise up. Keep your arms in the same position, lift your heels up. Let's challenge the balance. Keep gazing forward, start sitting deep down. Inhale, rise. Exhale, down. One more shape. Thighs together, knees together. Now lift your heels up. Imagine you're touching the wall behind you with your spine and you're sliding the spine down to the wall as slow as possible all the way to your heels and then the same way slowly come up exhale now release shake your palms a little bit and step forward feet together again press your feet take a moment into the mountain pose again check onto your breath you're still breathing you're still maintaining this flow of the prana of the breath all throughout your body With the next inhale, bend your knees, lift your arms up. Exhale, full. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, flow, step back, vinyasa. And meet you back and down. With the next inhale, lift your right leg up and step with your right foot forward back into the warrior one so on the way up i'm going to grab a couple of blocks and place it in front of me just in case for the balance you can do it later you can do it now depend if you have them handy so lift your arms up warrior one let's hold it for some time work on the rotation this back thigh in so you keep your hips square facing forward With the next exhalation, palms down to the sides. Start consciously shifting your weight forward towards your right foot till your right leg will become straight and you can pick your back foot up from the floor. 
you can stay here or you can bring your palms down to the blocks so as you're bringing your palms to the blocks rotate your back thigh in reach back with the left heel stay here engage your core standing leg is always straight if you feel stable here you can try to bring your palms to the heart or even extend your left arm forward Exhale, palms down, bend your right leg slightly and bring your left foot a bit closer now for the pyramid pose. Slowly come up. Both legs straight. Imagine you're placing your feet on two parallel lines. Keep your hips square and with the next exhalation, tilting your pelvis back, start lowering yourself down. Keeping pushing your right, foot, right thigh away from your left, pulling forward. And either stay here or you can grab two blocks and place it down maybe you even can go all the way towards your forward leg towards your right leg release your head next inhale look forward so what we're going to do with the left foot is move it a little bit more further back and Again, heels are going to be lined up. Use the block, place it from the inner side of your right foot. You can start with the highest position. Twist the triangle, push your left palm into the block, twist and rotate yourself to the side, right palm on the same. And only if you feel stable, you can extend your right arm up. So the position of the block will be completely optional. I'm using the, the most support here as block can offer me. Exhale, go down. Step back into the downward facing dog first. Shift forward into the plank. Vinyasa. Remember, it's optional. Left leg. Left leg up and hit. Exhale, step forward for the warrior one. Heel to the heel. Rise up. Press your feet into the floor, release your shoulders, breathe. Palms to the sides, I'm start shifting forward, placing two blocks in front of me, just for support. And moving all the way on my left leg, lifting my right leg up, touching the blocks. So today class is not about the balancing on one leg, but that's why we using a lot of support just introducing this kind of shape to the body and if you feel stable here if you found your one point of your gaze you can bring your palms together to the heart maybe even extending your right arm forward breathe exit okay right foot down i'm taking my blocks with me placing them a little bit lower Looking forward, inhale, and exhale, folding over my left leg. If this position is familiar, if you're familiar with this pose, you can always take it a bit deeper and take your elbows behind your spine, keeping your shoulders open, go all the way forward. Inhale, release. Come up halfway. I'm using the highest position of the block again, pressing my right palm into the block, pushing my left thigh back. At the same time, remember, we moved this back foot a little bit more back and in one line with the left. And then I'm opening, left arm up. Imagine you're stretching something in between your arms. And exhale. Very nice. Place the box aside, step back into the down dog. And again, I'm looking in between my feet and I'm walking with my palms towards my feet. Feet is slightly open, I'm moving into the squat. You can sit on the block. If your heels are lifted, don't worry, they can be lifted here. Palms together, push your knees to the sides. Malas. And let the gravity pull you down, let the gravity do its job and 
Release your sacrum, release your pelvis. You can close your eyes. Breathe through the nose. And if your heels already on the floor, you can play a little bit with this balance here, lifting heels up as you're inhaling and then lifting toes up as you're exhaling. So kind of rolling forward and back. You can keep your fingertips on the floor just in case if you feel this way more stable. Just a few rounds. Very nice. So we're going to come back to the down dog and the same way, moving forward. Take some time. It's not the most graceful transition, but nobody's watching, I promise. And so we're going to move into the next flow of the standing posture a bit more. Keep opening. So left foot closer to the center, right leg is rising up. Exhale, step right foot forward, high lunge. Back knee lifted, back heel lifted, rise up. Engage your core, reach up, sit deeper and push this back heel back towards this back wall. Exhale, glide open, warrior two. So here's taking some time to find this pose. Uh, alignment right heel to the left, arch. And as you're bending your right knee, make sure your right knee pointing straight forward. And you're activating again this inner side. Sometimes the knee is collapsing in, so you're working really hard to open up. Even you can use your arms to help yourself. Yes, you did. Arms in one line. Make sure your chest is lined up over your abdomen and over your hips. Look at your right palm, reach forward, up and over, reverse for you. This is a side stretch, not a back bend. So make sure you're not creating this excessive. Lumbar curve. Inhale back in the center. Both legs straight. Triangle pose. So with the triangle, I would suggest you to place the block on the highest position outside of your right foot. The block will be not an option. Right palm will go on the right leg. So in the triangle pose, it's even more tricky that this knee can roll in really fast, especially those who's hyper flexible, they can just lose the control of this right knee. So let's extend the arms to the sides and start shifting the weight towards your right arm, right side, all the way to the block or to the right leg. Left palm to the side. Watch this right knee. If it's collapsing in, start consciously rotating it out. Maybe bringing some micro bending and pointing your right knee to the side and then locking it up. And if you Successful with that, you can extend your left arm up, look up, breathe. And if you have some space in your left shoulder, you can circle your left arm up and over, left palm facing down. Inhale back in the center. Release your arms. Turn your feet in, the outer side of the feet in the parallel with each other. Press Sarisa for the tanas. Extend your arms to the sides again. Inhale. And as you're exhaling, start fold forward. Rotate your thighs in. Grab your shins, maybe ankles, maybe even big toes. As you're inhaling, look forward. And as you're exhaling, point your elbows to the sides and top of the head into the floor. Breathe into the back side of your lungs, into the space in between your shoulder blades. Keep your eyes open. Inhale, look forward. Arms to the sides, rise up. Good. Continue working with the same side. Turn your right foot out 90 degree, left foot in. Bend your right knee for the warrior two. Watch that the right knee is pointing straight and extend your arms. Reach with your right arm forward, up and over, reverse forward. And exhale, right elbow on your right thigh, left arm up. So I'll give you a few modifications here. Modifications here. 
You can extend your left arm above the head here as we did in triangle. Or you can even slide your right palm down to the floor or to the block, creating the resistance between your right leg and right arm. Side angle. Exhale, look down. Left palm down. Here, the transition, be very careful. You lift your back heel up and pivot your back foot to, to keep this left knee safe. Drop your back knee down. Lizard pose. Move your right foot to the right side of the yoga mat. So here, your variation again. You can keep your palms down to the floor. You can bring your forearms down to the floor or maybe to the block. And the position of back knee is completely optional. You can lift it up by tucking your toes under if you want more hip openings and let's stay a bit longer here and if you was on your elbows slowly come up on your palms drop your back knee down left palm to the center we're going to twist towards the right leg either stay here and extend your arms up maybe move your arm behind your spine or you can give it a try and open it into the hip flexor lift your back foot up grab your foot if you feel that it's really close but you cannot reach yet you can use the block place the left palm on the block and pull your right foot closer Exhale, release, left palm down, so if you have a very sensitive wrist, you can go on your forearm here or you can use the supported side plank, otherwise lift your back knee up, slide your right foot in front of the left and lift your right arm up, so you're basically pushing the pelvis up, almost creating a C shape or like a banana shape, breathe. Exhale, palms down. Your choice, vinyasa or downward facing dog. I'm going to repeat the same sequence on the other side. Left leg up and hip. Step forward. Come up. High lunge. Rise up. Maintain your balance between right and left foot. Push back into your right heel, sitting deeper with the left leg. Breathe in and out. Exhale, glide open, warrior two. Alignment heel to the arch, broaden your chest. Check this left knee, it's facing forward. Reach left arm forward, up and over. Reverse warrior. As you're moving in reverse warrior, don't forget about the position of the left leg. Inhale back in the center, front leg straight. Use the block if needed. I'm going to turn so I'll be facing you. So again, I'm going to use the same variation. This time you can place your palms on your thighs to so just check another transition here. So as you're starting to push your pelvis back, make sure your left knee is in a reasonable position and left palm down to the block, right arm rising up. Repeat the Trikonasana. And then I'm circling my right arm above the head if I have some space in my right shoulder and lengthening the whole right side. Inhale, rise back up. Exhale. Turn your feet in the prairie with each other. Modification of the pose. Interlace your fingers behind you. If you have really tight shoulders, you can just grab your elbows or use the uh, belt. So just holding on to the belt. Inhale, chest open. And exhale, fold forward. Rotate your thighs in. Release your head. Imagine head becoming so heavy, it's pulling you down really strong.
Exhale, palms down, take a sacrum. And then slowly rising up. Left up, 90 degrees. Right foot in, coming back to the warrior two. Turning your chest. Reach left arm forward, up and over, reverse foot. Inhale back, side angle. Your variation of going into the full pose, the full uh, expression of the pose. You can go with your left elbow on your left thigh if you just begin to practice this shape. Exhale, look down. Both palms down. Lift your back heel. Build your back foot. Laser pose. Try to use the same variation. Usually have one uh, leg, one hip a bit more flexible, a bit more open than another. So our point is bring the flexibility and when, uh, bring the balance. And when you're working from home or working by yourself, you always can figure out which side is more tense and work on this side a bit longer, uh, stay longer or go a bit deeper with each side. It was on your elbows, come up on your palms, into the twist. Right palm down, twisting towards your left leg, maybe moving your left arm behind, pulling this back foot closer. Use block, as I said, if you um, want to bring the foot a bit closer to yourself. And yeah, next, side plank, right palm, right forearm down. Slide your left foot in front of your right, reach up. Go back, vinyasa, or downward facing dog. So I'm going to meet, meet you in the down dog. Move with your own pace. And whenever you're arriving in down dog, let's take a child pose. So bring your knees down, extend your arms in front of you, forehead down to the floor. Child pose for a few breaths. With the next inhale, look forward. Bring your palms closer, come back into the down. One more little sequence before the final relaxation. So left foot in the center, lift your right leg up, bend your knee open. And as you're exhaling, move your right foot behind your left palm and come into the pigeon pose. So front leg 90 degree or sharper, left leg in one line with your right foot. Open up your chest, look forward. And as you're exhaling, fold all the way forward. Maybe on your forearms, maybe all the way on your forehead. Take a few breaths. With the next inhale, slowly come up. Bring your palms halfway towards you. Move your left leg all the way forward. For the art homotin drasana twist you can extend your right arm and right leg in front of you to make it half position otherwise twist here left palm behind you touch keep your spine straight going into the full position push your right knee your right palm sorry right elbow into your left knee and look behind Slowly go back, move your left leg all the way back, come back into the down dog. Other side, left leg up, bend in. Move your left foot behind your right palm. Pigeon on the other side, Kapatasana. Find the balance, open up your heart. And as you're exhaling, folding forward. Inhale, slowly come up halfway. Move your left knee facing forward. Move your right leg all the way across. Adha Matsyandrasana twist. Make sure both sit bones pressing into the floor. Right palm behind. Keep your spine straight. Go in deeper. Push your left elbow into your right knee. Twist into your thoracic spine, into your chest. Breathe. Let's 
exhale back in the center. Very nice. As the one falls forward before me, we'll go in our final relaxation and laying down on the floor. So sit with the straight legs, move your flesh to the buttocks behind, sit on your sit bones, feet flexed. Interlace your fingers, reach up and draw your navel in, inhale. And as you're exhaling, fold forward. If your lower back feels a bit achy, you can hug your thighs, bend your knees slightly. Otherwise, again, here, the position of the feet is very, very important. So imagine you have a wall in front of you and you're pressing your feet into the wall, push your inner feet out, uh, forward and pull your outer feet towards you. So basically opening your feet as it would be a book and release your head. Inhale, slowly rise up. Purvatanasana, bend your knees, feet down. Palms behind your pelvis, lift up, almost a reverse tabletop, I would call this toss. Engage your gluteal muscles, breathe through the whole front side of your body. Look up. And exhale, slowly lower yourself down. On the way down to the floor, take a block. Slide the block underneath your pelvis. If you have a soft block, it's always good to hold on to that because it can be a little wobbly. Otherwise, if it's solid like mine, you can just let it go. So bend the both knees and then extend the both legs out a bit. Inverted position here. Take a few breaths. Come back to your knees. Bend if you need a bit more release for your lower for your posture. Close your eyes. I'm going to stay here for 30 more seconds or so. It's a great alternative to the inverted positions. You can use the wall as well here to create a little bit more support for your legs. down to the floor, lift your pelvis, remove the neck. You can take a take the baby pose, grabbing your big toe, the outside of your feet, roll from side to side and stay still, releasing completely the lower back. We're going to move a couple of twists before our final relaxation. So release your legs, put your pelvis to the left, right leg straight, pull your left knee to the chest. Slowly move your left knee over to the right for the twist. Extend your left arm to the side. Inhale, slowly roll back into the center. Switch the sides. Hips to the right. Left leg straight, right knee to the chest. And exhale, right knee to the left. Right arm to the side. shape for today if you need to take any inverted position if your body asking for any uh, back bends you're welcome to do so otherwise just come into shavasana with me final relaxation so have a poster with me just in case to show you this modification if you feel a little tired in your lower back you can always have a big pillow bolster maybe folded blanket to place it underneath your knees or find a very comfortable position on the floor so release your arms along the sides, close your eyes. I'm going to lead you through the relaxation today. Shavasana is our final destination. So make sure you make yourself comfortable so you don't need to move your body during the relaxation. 
close your eyes and release your facial muscles. Let go of the control over your thoughts and over your feelings. Let go of the control over your breath and over your physical shape. I'm going to name you the different parts of your body or what you need to move your awareness from part to part. We're going to start with the right side. And your right palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, right side of your torso, hip, thigh, knee, shin, ankle, heel, foot. Feel the whole right side of your body. Switch your awareness to the left. Feel the left palm, wrist, elbow, shoulder, armpit, side of your torso, hip, thigh, knee, shin, ankle, and foot. Feel the whole left side of your body. The whole your body is completely relaxed. Imagine it becoming softer and heavier with each exhalation. Sinking into the floor. And at some point, you may be even losing the idea of the shape of the body. Just the warmth and light inside of you. And the movement of the air as you're breathing. So float here for a few minutes.
for the next inhalation. Slowly start to move your fingers, move your toes, move your head from side to side. Stretch your arms up above your head. And slowly pull your knees towards your chest. With the arms spiral to the right or to the left side. And whenever you're ready, pick yourself back up into the seated position. In a comfortable sitting pose with a straight spine. Whenever you're arriving in the seated pose, close your eyes. We're going to close our class here. Bring your palms in front of your heart. Feeling the gratitude to yourself, to your body for today's work, for today's class. Remembering that the main idea with the, any experience which we're getting on our yoga mat, we're incorporating our daily lives. We're finding the use in our life every day. Cover your eyes with your palms. Slowly blink your eyes to open inside of your palm. Bring your palms back to your heart. Bow to yourself and to each other. 